Do you find yourself getting anxious or stressed? Do you find it hard to catch your breath or feel tightening of your chest when life is becoming overwhelming at times? Are you struggling to calm yourself down, especially in these uncertain times that we live in? Well, consciously changing the way you breathe appears to send a signal to the brain to adjust the parasympathetic branch of the nervous system, which can slow heart rate and digestion and promote feelings of calm, as well as sympathetic system, which controls the release of stress hormones like cortisol. If any of this resonates, then tune into today's episode. Welcome back, Soul Tribe, as we continue the journey of Series 3. And today's episode, we discuss power of the breath. You may recall the episode Power of the Mind, and in a similar light, we will explore how integral our breath is in our life and here on Earth. It is the center of our universe, and we do need to honor and respect it consciously. I am super pleased to introduce the incredible free spirit of a guest, Leslie Medley, a worldwide mindfulness teacher. Leslie is a natural born teacher with a unique way of combining the ancient time tested teachings of the East with the modern hipster mindset training of the West, taking woo spiritual concepts and making them relevant, relatable, implementable and actionable. She teaches the entire technologies of yoga, guides embodiment experiences paired with experiential learning as the potent and fail proof transformative and awakening tools. She studied 500 plus hours at the base of the Himalayan mountains where yoga originated in India. This is initiated under the Yoganada lineage, teaching Kiriya and Pranayama and other various embodiment and awakening practices that cannot be found on the internet and are only taught verbally from guru to devoted student. Completing meditation and trauma healing courses in Nepal, India and Indonesia, When she is not in her new home of San Diego, she is teaching, coaching and leading online women empowerment and personal growth spaces in communities. She is living in her summer home in Bali, guiding transformation adventure retreats and healing experiences, being the embodiment of what is possible by choosing your soul's evolutionary adventure above all. So with that being said, I'd love to welcome you, Leslie, to today's episode. How are you doing? Fabulous. Hello, 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 community. I have full body chills already, which is a confirmation that I'm in the right place. I'm in the (laughs) right room and I am so ready to share on something that I'm personally so passionate about. And that is the breath, the power of the breath. So thank you for having me. Hello, hello. (laughs) Thank you too, Leslie. I I just really feel the vibration of your voice and your energy, even when we were preparing ahead of this. I could feel it, your emails and your communications. I remember one of the times you were like, no, I need to send a voice note to you. And I could (laughs) feel your vibe. And I was like, wow, yeah, she's great energy. We have to get into a combo. So, yes. Here we and are. in um and in Pacific American time, it is eleven eleven. So I am ready to oh. rock. I am ready to roll. <laughs> and I know you're in the UK. And I just want to highlight how much I am so grateful for the social media world because I'm continuously blown away at who I get to meet, who I get to come across, who I get to connect with, and who I get to collaborate with. That would never be possible if it wasn't for these virtual interwebs. Yeah, there is so much positive outcomes of having these platforms, especially at a time like this, right? And I want the Soul Tribe to know, like the guests that we're having on, like you're not just going to see Leslie on a one-stop shop. Like Leslie's part of the Soul Tribe. We're part of Leslie's community. We're all coming together and we're all supporting each other. So um, Leslie's going to be back again. She's got great content. We're going to get into a bit of that, but you will see on the Instagram page where I share a lot of the content we're sharing from the fellow community kind of, you know, leaders, gurus, I wouldn't say leaders, we're all kind of brothers and sisters in all of this, right? Mm, But, mm -hmm. you know, those that are just kind of trying to drive this movement for humanity. And Leslie is one of those beautiful souls. So stay tuned because you'll see content and you'll be like, ah, that's Leslie Medley. So (laughs) (laughs) yay, more to come, more to come. I'm so excited. So, Leslie, I mean, I am a little bit, you know, in awe of this whole time you spent in the Himalayan mountains. I am Mm. of part Indian descent. So, Mm. I mean, I've never really wanted to explore India, but 
I think the Himalayan mountains is a place where that actually more in recent years, I'm like, you know, my soul mm-hmm. is calling me there. I, mm-hmm. I know that there is some trace of me having some Northern Indian background. Yeah. So I'm like, whoa, you know, it's funny because, um, you know, ancestrally, I know that there's the, probably my ancestors were doing some of these like, you know, ancient practices. So mm-hmm. I, without going into all of that, because I need to dig deeper, I just, I'm really inspired by, you know, you studying in India. And I'd just love to hear a bit more about your experiences there and what's inspired you to take that route and then become this international teacher of, of, of this area. Oh, yes, Stephanie. And this is always not only one of my favorite questions, but truthfully, such a big question. Because I, I, there's no way I could share one moment, or one breakthrough, or one teacher, or one person that led me to that moment, that decision of leaving everything I knew, packing one bag, really, and leaving my booming, thriving, new ICU nurse career, and just going for it, quote unquote, and living out of a backpack while studying around the world through various teachings through my guru and studying in India and building a business, having no idea what I was doing, but walking anyway. However, I'll do my best to to paint a little bit of a visual of what was going on in my world at the time and how I ended up not only in India, but to really dive so deep into the teachings and the practices and the studies that I had the opportunity to receive and to now share. And I actually grew up very, very traditionally Christian and traditionally religious. So the fact that I'm now this known as this rebellious, (laughs) free-spirited yogi is like, wait, hold up. Like, where did the tables turn? What happened? Tell me more. And once again, I, I could, this whole entire podcast interview could be on the story of how that all unfolded. But what I really see ultimately is as long as I can remember, I've had a burning, burning calling inside my heart to share my story and to heal humanity in a really big way. And when I was younger, of course, I didn't use that language. (laughs) And I definitely wasn't necessarily like thinking that I could feel it, though. And it felt like this urgency and it felt like I wanted to be maybe a public speaker, maybe a teacher. I was going to be a teacher. And then I realized I didn't really want to make no money and and devote my life to traditional education. And so I decided to go into nursing where I could still teach and then also tap into more of that healing. And so this has been an evolutionary adventure. But ultimately, Stephanie, to answer your question, it was over a decade, really, of following my charm, chasing my joy. One piece by piece by piece, I started realizing that adventure and travel and moving my body and hiking mountains was a huge outlet and turn on for me. I started realizing that I had such a passion and love for personal development and spiritual growth, even though on paper, I really didn't have much experience, especially compared to the worldwide international teachers that I looked up to. Yet every decision, every choice, it was, am I going to do it the way society wants me to do it? Mm -hmm. Am I going to do it the way I was conditioned to do it? Am I going to do it the way that I only know how to do it? Or am I going to take a chance? Am I going to take a risk on me, on my life, on this feeling, what I call the calling on our heart? This is that voice. We can label it as a nudge. We can label it as like our Jiminy Cricket conscience, our intuition, the voice of God. But it wasn't until I started connecting to my breath, which by the way, even this moment is working for you, even when you were thinking about it and even when you weren't. That is how supported you are. Your basic bodily functions work for you. And I started realizing that, thank God they do. (laughs) Because if some of my bodily functions were up to me, I wouldn't have time for it. 
Wow. I'd be too busy. Mm-hmm. I'd be dead. <laughs> you know, you know it, uh, like I'm in awe of what you said when you said the mountain hiking, the free spirit, you know, come, I'm just retracking back what you said. You know, you probably wouldn't describe half of these things that when you were younger now, right? you know, going from Christianity to really just finding my divine spiritual self. Like yes. me. Yes. I, I grew up Catholic. So I'm so with you woman. Yes. You. Yes. Don't get me wrong. Like my Catholicism, my beliefs, my faith, that's probably taught me some ideas of like mm. having that blind faith. You don't see the God, mm. right? Like, so there is that, right. don't get me wrong. But the fundamental difference for me is that you put, You don't put the trust in anyone else, but you trust yourself first. You trust the divine source energy, the life force within you. And I find that that is just magnificent. Once you come across that real true, you know, being within yourself, like that force within yourself, it's like, oh my gosh, where have I been all these years, right? I'm not saying reading a religious book isn't good, because there's so right. many there's so many books on the teachings of yoga and spirituality like that mm-hmm. I, I love to consume but i find that it's it comes from within like a lot of this learning is coming from within and then you're getting in tune with yourself mm-hmm. with the divine with the creator and then you get the inspired intuition totally action that may drive you to read an article that actually resonates and might may mm-hmm. create synchronistic meetings like me and you being here right now Leslie like i am thankful totally for you. oh totally and stephanie i i so received that and what I like to joke about and tell tell students when I'm teaching is if I were to look in a course, a college course catalog, worldwide mindfulness teacher, adventure guide, you know, some of these titles that I've literally come up with, <laughs> I've made up, I made up, you wouldn't find it. And so I see for myself and I know that there's women and maybe even men listening to this session that really resonate with the feeling of never fitting in. Yeah. Being what we call in America, at least maybe around the world, the black sheep. Yeah, we say over here. Okay, okay, okay. And I know (laughs) for me, for so long, I spent my entire life, even this little preview I did of what, you know, from religious to spirituality and following my charm throughout every step of that journey up until really Stephanie a few years ago I was making choices and decisions that yeah kind of excited me but also that was safe enough to be accepted by my people by the world by what I projected on the world and my family and what I realized was I wanted nothing more than to not only be accepted by the changes that I was making and the person I was becoming, but I wanted to be celebrated. Gosh, dang it. Yeah. And it wasn't until I realized that I was spending so much of my time and so much of my life to yes, grow and change, but all within still the limits and the constraints of family of friends, of current societal acceptance Uh and unacceptance. And then I realized, wow, it all started making sense. I was never meant to fit in. In fact, I was born to to stand out. And we can see that on a quote graphic, but until it becomes our internal experience, that's for me when some of the lights really turned on. And I realized that in me wanting to be accepted, this new change, this new person that I was becoming, that I think, of course, is a better version for sure. But I wanted so badly to have the previous people in my life, whether that's my family or maybe some old friends, to be on board. Yeah. Not only on board, but I wanted them to celebrate. And I realized that I wasn't celebrating me. I wasn't celebrating the journey, let alone accepting it. Yeah. Because I was starting to own that I was different and that I had a lot to bring to the world while still carrying the baggage of my old self, wondering why I'm so tired. 
and why it feels like such an inner conflict and why I feel like there's so much resistance. Yeah, I uh, wow. Well said. And it's so interesting. Can I just say, I, I clapped at one point it was, it was too much <laughs> because I'm at a point now in my journey where I get the absolute like pleasure and blessing and support mm. from the universe to align with souls like you, Leslie, because yes. before I was going through the exact same thing. Yes. Imagine. And I was going, hey, 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 I'm making these decisions. I'm making these changes. Yo, look at me like family. Right. Dad, dad, you know, hey, yes. like, um, can you not give me some kudos? And I wasn't even looking at myself going, no, like you need to be focused on you and you need to give yourself that. And that was that self-love yeah. journey, right? We still yeah. are on, but I totally dig what you're saying. And I think a lot of our listeners, Leslie, which I've I've come to realize as time's gone on, really thankful to be here now six months in on series three. We're starting to mm. build this beautiful soul tribe, this community. And a lot of them are saying, you know, I don't fit in and uh-huh. things or it doesn't make sense anymore. And yep. we are in the time of mass awakening. And I want to yep. say this. I want to take away the term black sheep because the sheep follows in a, even if it's a black sheep or a white sheep, yeah, it's still follows right. a flock, right? But we are, we stand out. We're wolves. We're leaders, mm-hmm. leaders of authenticity, of our truth. Yes. We're not scared to really shine in our authentic, genuine truth. And we don't care what anyone thinks because we know in our heart and soul there is a reason for that. We are here on earth to shine our lights, to help humanity also shine their lights for the greater good of the earth. Yes. Oh, I have full body chills, Stephanie, <laughs> when you say that. And I, I believe it goes back to the original point of it all starts from within. And once again, I call this really what I see a lot of us women specifically do, including myself, is what I call is we spend so much time strengthening our horizontal connections. We reach out for the food. We reach out for the substances. For me, it was like reaching out for the boys, reaching out for validation, reaching out for the promotion. And we spend very little to no time sometimes in what I've seen, strengthening our vertical connection our connection to self, our connection to God consciousness, to this unity consciousness that we read about. And so I wish you could see me, but as you imagine yourself just literally reaching, like you're just drowning and you're reaching, maybe it will be this book or maybe it will be this person or maybe if I can just... (laughs) And bring your hands back in towards your heart. Place your hands on your heart. And if you're driving, please don't pull over first. And if you're not (laughs) driving and you're where you're safe, take a moment here. Literally reach out and extend yourself and feel what it feels like to like reach and hold your arms up. And it's kind of tiring after a while. And then bring your left hand over your heart and your right hand on top and just feel you. Be here now. And I like to initiate the breath right into the heart by deepening my breath. Feeling the chest slightly lift with the breath. And then I exhale. Feeling the chest depress slightly with my hands pressing against my skin. I inhale. Breathing into the heart, and I exhale, release. And whether it's a few moments or many, many moments, the breath is always available to you right now, and right now, and also right now. By closing down the eyes, 
you close out over 70% of external external stimulus. This is noises, colors, distractions. Closing down the eyes one more time, even with the eyes closed, close them once more as you feel yourself deep in here. Initiating the breath, deep breath through both nostrils. Breathing into the heart center, hold the breath at the top. Exhale, let it go. Holding at the bottom. A few more rounds, simple, effortless, easy breath. In and out of both nostrils. The entire time we've been recording this episode and you've been listening to this episode, this breath has been moving. Your breath has been supporting this very moment, your life. And whether you think about it or not, this breath works for you. And when you do bring intention and awareness to the breath, the breath then not only acts as your life force, prana, but your breath begins to act as the amplifier of this moment, the circulator of this experience. One last deep breath here, deepest breath of the day as you fill your belly with air, the rib cage expands, the chest lifts completely filled up, hold here, encoding in your nervous system this new vibration, this expanded space. Whenever you're ready, this time open your mouth, exhale, And gently allow the natural pressure and resistance of the breath to leave your body. Experiencing the deep release as you let go. (sighs) Holding at the bottom. On your next inhalation, inhaling the hands now into prayer position at the heart. Palms are touching, pressing together. Maybe you roll the shoulders back. Maybe elongating through the spine. Taking a notice of the shift in your physiology, in your heart, in your mind. Begin rubbing the palms together as you create friction in between the palms creating a charge in front of the largest electromagnetic field in your entire being, your heart center. Feeling the warmth, feeling the energy activate. And whenever you're ready, pressing the palms together, coming to stillness, and on your next breath, placing the hands over the face. Feeling the warmth of your hands, your skin on your skin, the small space in between, the pulsating energy leaving your hands, which are simply an extension, your second Anahata chakra, the second heart chakra. Deep breath through the nose here. And as you exhale, the hands melt away, returning to your lap and your eyes flutter open. Coming back to this new moment, new space. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the power of the breath, the power of you the power of the God and goddess inside of you. Wow. Thank you, Leslie. I feel, I feel really calm. I was trying, can I be honest? I was trying, yes. to, um, 
I was I was doing it, but then I was also thinking, oh, we're recording, and if I zone out, <laughs> I, need to, I need to get back in. So, so I was yeah. sort of like doing part, and then I I got really like chilled to you, and I was like, well, she could like she could carry on, and we could just <laughs> I, we could have done, well. kept going. I was like, oh man, and Stephanie, I know we had originally talked about doing that towards the end. It felt so natural to bring it in now. And yes. so I love, I actually love that it's kind of mid episode. And so yes. this, this, this episode gets to be really experiential the entire way. No, absolutely. And I, I quite like the way it's turned out. And I think from us doing that, it will be quite nice to go, you know, you've mentioned prana, life force, energy. Why is the breath so powerful for us, Leslie? Why do we need to actually just take stock of and respect it? Because I think we forget that it is what holds us together day yeah. in, day out, right here, right now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's so many ways I could answer this question. I'll start with the simple fact that your breath is the first function that occurs when you enter life, physical life, and it's the last function that occurs when you leave physical life. So that alone tells me this is kind of important <laughs> yeah. and it's an essential. It also tells me it's an, an essential part of life being alive. And Stephanie, I'll insert this in because it's, it's really funny and this will be so perfect for what we've covered so far. I had no idea when I was an intensive care nurse, a trauma nurse working in ICU, working with sedated and ventilated patients, so patients that were on a respirator or a ventilator. And I didn't realize what I was doing at the time, really, but what I was doing was breath work with my patients, except they weren't conscious and I wasn't guiding them. I was actually using a machine. And so for those of you that don't really know what a ventilator does is yes, it breathes for you, but there's so many other functions that it does. I can work with certain part of the lung and allow the lung to expand to receive a bigger breath or maybe a bigger exhalation, a bigger inhalation. I can have the breath hold at the top. I can have the breath hold at the bottom. And of course there's medical terminology for all of this. But the point really was it wasn't until after the fact that I, that I was that I realized when working with these ventilated patients in critical condition that the quickest way to heal was not from the medications I was giving them was not from any other intervention but the quickest and most effective way was through the breath and I see it all the time, people drinking alkaline water because they want to be more alkaline because they hear that that's going to help them not have disease. And disease breeds in these acidic environments. And actually what I was doing with these ventilated patients is working with their pH, alkaline acidic. And what people don't realize is the biggest, most effective way to alkaline your system, yourself, is through the breath even more so than the gut. We also hear about the gut and we need to cleanse the gut. And there's so much trauma and emotion and even disease, physical manifestation of disease in the gut. The lungs have the power and the capacity to cause even more detoxification and purification than any other organ in the body. In our society, I'm going to really say at this point across the globe, not just the American society. However, there are a few westernized societies that are known to be a little worse <laughs> for this than <laughs> others, but we don't know how to breathe. Yeah. And I, I think, because just like I started this whole conversation with, we think because we literally are born doing it, we leave life doing it, we should, we got it down. We don't need to learn how to do it because we come into this world doing it. Yeah. yeah. However, in ancient times, didn't exist TV, didn't exist cell phones. And I don't even want to blame it all on technology because I flip and love technology. But it's our posturing. It's our diet. 
it's the way in which we move through life. Yeah. And the lack of education all combined leads to not only horrible posturing for the breath, like we don't even sit in a way that allows for a complete breath, let alone receiving that breath on a regular basis. And so Stephanie, there's a few reasons on a physiological standpoint why the breath is so powerful, but I'm going to choose right now to speak to one. And that is because the breath is the, I was going to, I'm going to say like the quickest and easiest way to stimulate your vagal nerve. This is your largest nerve in your body. And this nerve has the power to regulate, I'm going to say pretty much everything, your heart rate, your breath, your temperature, all regulation, your digestion, your diet, like all regulation of your system. And in nursing, using that again, once again, as an example, we have a term called vagal down. And it's when a patient's heart rate is like through the roof, we actually ask them to kind of squeeze their anal and perineal muscles, bearing down is another way to say it, because this also is a way to somewhat activate the vagal nerve, which will immediate, typically, it causes really like a reset, the heart rate will lower, functions will change. And then of course, if that doesn't work, then there's other medications we can give. And so when you are sitting in a breathwork practice, there's so much happening. You are stimulating the largest nerve in your body. And if you've tapped into spirituality at all, we talk a lot about the spine, the channel of God. And in yoga specifically, there's a lot of physical postures to open up this channel. Cat cow is an example where we're flexing and contracting the spine. When we're working with the breath, there's different breath work practices that work with the upward flow of breath, the downward flow of breath, the expansion, the contraction, and everything in between. And what I've found is the breath acts as the most natural healer, amplifier, circulator and notifier I've ever experienced. I personally have been around the world. I've studied in multiple countries. I've studied multiple modalities and I've lived out multiple realities and worlds, pretty extreme, (laughs) different (laughs) realities and worlds. And I have yet to find something as free as natural, as available, and as effective as the breath. Now, I could also add in, in that same breath, that's why I believe we grow up in societies that keep a lot of this power contracted. Yeah. That keep a lot of this information hidden. And we wait until we're in an ICU bed in critical condition to use the power of the breath to heal. I left ICU nursing in the four walls of a hospital, not because I didn't love what I did and not because I didn't consider myself a nurse. I absolutely still consider myself a nurse of the world now. However, I wanted to bring this power to the preventative world before we're in critical condition yes to use it now yoga is now life is now and if we're constantly waiting for the right moment or to have enough time i've seen it time and time again that is when our life is then over or we're in an icu bed or we're in a place that we wish We wish we would have taken action when we had the chance. Yeah, I love the fact that you framed it around prevention and prevention is better than cure. I think Mm -hmm. one of the biggest, you know, illusions out there and we we could get into a whole other topic is that I think, and I'm constantly saying this to like my dad as well, that I think we've become so accustomed to what society says when you're not feeling well mm-hmm. you need to seek, you know, prescribed drugs and you need to yep. and do things based on medication. But like, take that all away. 
we, I truly believe we are given all of the gifts within each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. The breath being the primal force that lives within us, thrives through us. And then we have all these other interconnected, you know, gifts and the ability to be able to harness that and to allow ourselves to heal ourselves. Like, you know, the power of the breathing technique, Mm -hmm. the power of actually fasting. Many people say to me, I fast all the time. And they say, well, how would you do that? Like, you're going to put yourself through. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, actually, did you know that a lot of illnesses can be cured and you can heal your body by not actually eating food? So that the the body kind of almost like kills and eats whatever Mm -hmm. within you. And it's just really simple things that don't require any prescription drugs, totally any external influences, and then just connecting with the earth. We are earth. We are connected with the earth and eating like some very good Mm -hmm. plant food and just being very, very simple. Like I think it's stripping away all of this illusion, all of this noise that actually – in, in some respects forms a lot of what capitalism is and what you know society mm-hmm. needs it to be for its way to thrive but like you said as well earlier we weren't taught a lot of this you know I'm a mm-hmm. big fond, I'm a big fond believer that in schools children need to be learning a lot of these simple mm-hmm. life you know life important techniques you know, attending to the breath when you're feeling, you know, just even like, oh, you have an exam or you yep. don't, you don't like a topic in school, whatever it is, or your friend started fighting with you in the playground, right? Like just stop and breathe. And just yep. that simple, just stop, take a step back or your mind's going like over time, how, how many of the guys listening is going to go, oh, I went into this work meeting or I had a confrontation with family or yes. something happened with my partner and then everything's racing through your mind. If you stop and pay attention to your breath and you just give the attention there, all of a sudden, all of that anxiousness, that feeling of stress and cortisol starts to kind of almost dissipate and start to Mm -hmm. you know retract back from where it's trying to go because you're giving yourself the attention and just working with your own breath like just working with what keeps you alive breathing healthy here on earth right yes Yes. Yeah. It's so funny because Leslie, I was talking to a friend and I'm sure they're going to be listening to this. And they were saying to me, Steph is so true. Like we need to spend more time with our breath. (laughs) And she said to one of her friends, like, just stop and breathe, like stop and like, just stop, Mm -hmm. take time to breathe. Like, I think you, you, you calm yourself down a bit more. And the friend said, I haven't got time to breathe. And I, (laughs) I laughed. Because I was like, does she not know? <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my goodness, no way. You haven't got time to breathe? Well, guess what? Yeah. You might not have time for the breath, but the breath's got time for you Has- every mm-hmm. second of your life here on earth. So yeah. how about that? Why don't you start paying respect to that breath? Because the breath is what is holding you up. That is your backbone. That is, yeah. that is your that that's your best friend. Like if you don't give love to your that best friend in your life, poof, your priorities are in the wrong place. What kind of life are you living? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What 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 are you breathing, or how are you breathing? <laughs> and, and I just I love that brings this all full circle. Where I started, I had this realization that if if my bodily functions were up to me, I mean, straight up, I'd be dead yeah. because I wouldn't. I would say I don't have time. This is yeah. too much work. I'll get to it later. I'll schedule it in. And then I would be dead. Yeah. And so I love that you brought that in, Stephanie, because I really want to highlight here when we're talking about breath work or the breath pranayama. Yes, it's a modality. It's a healing modality. But it's also part of you. And instead of looking at what we're talking about right now is like, oh, I, I just need to add that to my list. Okay, I know breath works good for me. I keep hearing about it. Okay, let me go add that to my list of things <laughs> to do. Because once again, what is that? It's an external. It's an external to do. It's an external I gotta. 
Uh I got to go, got to, got to, got to go do this so I can be fixed or so I can be healthier because Stephanie said to do it. (laughs) And I don't know about you, Stephanie, but that's kind of missing the point to everything we've been talking about here. Yeah. Which is connecting within. Yeah. Which is causing being. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the being sometimes is very hard. Like, you know, you said external for me, that's masculine energy. Like I've got to go and do, yeah. and do, do, do. do. Mm-hmm. It's honing in on that receiving energy, receive the breath, acknowledge it and be, that's the feminine, yeah. the feminine sacred energy within us. Right. Yes. Being. yes. Being and I want to highlight for the community as a teacher of this work myself, In fact, I just shared this in a live event in my community last night, because during the day, yesterday was Sunday for me. And as a teacher of this work, I still have sessions, I call them sessions, really moments, afternoons, that I practice, literally practice and learn how to be. And this is someone myself who has completed over 100 hours of silent meditation one time I've sat for hours and hours and hours in meditation. And I still practice and learn how to be, especially in moments of growth. When life is moving really quickly, which, hey, we're in the Aquarian age. So for the rest of our lives, life is going to be moving really, really fast. So buckle up, put your seatbelt on now. Let's (laughs) accept it. And for me, Stephanie, I'm very susceptible, even though I'm aware, I'm very susceptible to the pace in America. And I don't know exactly what the pace is like for you in the UK, but I would imagine it's fairly similar. And you even said it's more of this masculine, there's deadlines and you got to do so that you can be worth something and you got to get promoted so that you can have. And it's a lot of this do so I can have, or let me do this so I can be. And I know from my own experience, I can know from my own, from just life, from reading books that I need to be. Ram Dass says, be here now. Okay, Ram, I'm going to, let me try it on. <laughs> let me do it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, but you should be right, responding back to the client. And, oh, you haven't emailed Stephanie back yet. And, oh, maybe you, you're at the park. Maybe you should be doing yoga. Or, oh, you're at the park. Maybe, maybe you need to go walk around, go move your body. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I'm saying that I'm spending the afternoon doing nothing. I'm attempting (laughs) to spend (laughs) the afternoon doing something and, and I'm not even meditating. And still all of a sudden, every part of me, the part of me that are unhealed or unrefined or still very much in that conditioning speak up. And say, oh, let's go do something. Oh, you're not worthy. Oh, you better go do something so you can be worthy. Mm -hmm. And this right here, this right here is what I call a choice point. Because everything inside of you, your nervous system, your body, your physiology, maybe even your mind is going to tell you to go do something. Or you should be doing something. Yeah. Or you shouldn't be doing this. Or you should be doing that. And what I've realized and what I teach on every single day is any time we're shooting ourselves, I should be doing, I should be meditating or I should be immediately shame enters the room. And any time shame is in the room, our expression, peace, our liberated peace is not. And so At that choice point, in that moment, and by the way, these choice points can come every single day sometimes, Mm -hmm. moment to moment. It's not just like one time and you're done. In that moment, the adult awake, aware, Leslie, got to hold and direct and redirect the little girl inside of me that was kind of freaking out. And at that moment, I get to choose. I get to choose to go do something (laughs) and give in to the noise, give in to the conditioning, or I have a choice to choose me, to choose a new way, to choose a new standard, a new pace for me and my life. 
And once again, Stephanie, this isn't a one-time choice. In fact, this is a moment to moment to moment choice. And to kind of wrap up that little story, I ended up falling asleep in the sun. It was so divine. It was so beautiful. And I woke up because it was time to start transitioning to go teach my event. (laughs) And I woke up, Stephanie, and I felt like I was high. It was amazing. I was so at peace. My system had completely let go. It took some time though. And it took me choosing. And I think you even mentioned it. Someone said, yeah, just go to your breath. Mm -hmm. And what I see happen is we do that. Okay, let me take a breath. And we like close our eyes and we breathe for maybe one or two seconds. And as I believe there is no waste of time and one or two seconds has its value. When we're anxious, when we're angry, when a huge emotion is pulsating through our bloodstream and the chemical reaction is taking place, depending on the emotion and elevation of emotion, this process alone, just for the emotion to do its chemical reaction, (laughs) (laughs) takes about 7 to 12 minutes. And I I even want to leave the community with this, Stephanie, because try it on for yourself. The next time you're just pissed and you know what I'm talking about, whether it's at your partner, at the traffic, (laughs) whatever it is, the next time you're just like, I could literally throw something across the room right now and it would feel so good, but I'm not going to say that out loud because then I'll be judged that those moments, I want you to practice what you read about. I want you to practice these teachings in real time, not through your mind thinking about it but through your embodied action. And I want you to become the observer, embodied, actually observe and be the holder of the moment. Be the pillar of the moment as you watch the moment unfold. Because my very strong guess, in fact, I almost wanna make a bet, would be, that you will watch the chaos, you'll feel really uncomfortable, you might even get hot, your heart will start racing. And if you give yourself a chance, you will move through that emotion so powerfully that before you know it, you'll be on the other side in a brand new moment. It's not the actual moment of anger that takes us out. In fact, if you are telling me you never get angry, I want to sit down with you, (laughs) first of all. And I want to ask what kind of life you're living. It's not about never getting angry again or always being high vibe. In fact, if that's what you're aiming for, my guess would be you're not really living the way your soul's asking to live. But it's really about, are you attaching yourself? Are you bringing in guilt and shame that it shouldn't be happening? Are you swimming in it, extending it? Are you projecting it onto your partner, extending it some more? Are you adding a voice to it, giving it more power? Or are you actually being the embodiment of observation. In Vipassana, silent meditation, the technique taught by Buddha originally, his main teaching is around impermanence. And this teaching is that every single thing in life is made up of energy. We've been, this we know to be true, proven by modern science. And we also have realized through sitting in meditation that everything that's made up of energy, which is everything we know to be true, arises and untrue, arises and passes, arises and passes, arises and and passes. And suffering only comes from not what arises and passes, but rather our attachment or our aversion. We're either attaching ourselves to it, making it who we are, or we're avoiding it, disowning it at all costs. And so your takeaway is yes, go to your breath, close down the eyes, 
Inhale a new moment. Inhale life. And give yourself the adequate time and space to move through each moment even more powerfully. Sometimes the moment of the hour requires you to simply be. Sometimes the moment of the hour will require you to act, to redirect yourself, to move the energy. Sometimes the moment of the hour will bring you to your knees and ask you to literally let it all go, surrender. And sometimes the moment of the hour is going to ask you to speak up. And you will experience your most liberated life as soon as you allow life to move through you and you remain the solid temple, the house of your breath, the house of God. Wow, Leslie, that was like a whole meditation in itself (laughs) as well. I was just here just vibing to that. Oh my goodness. I feel like, yeah, thank you so much. I feel like this whole episode is definitely more of a, you know, just really passively listen and like immerse yourself in connection with self. So I hope that for the listeners, if they've managed to do that, if they were on the move today, listening to this, then perhaps listen back to this whole episode again, when you're in like a more, you know, calmer, tranquil setting and just really vibe with the, the guidance and the beautiful words of Leslie, because I think there's a lot of kind of just being in this episode. Mm-hmm. It's not too much for your mind to process. It's more about yes. you just absorbing the moment. And that's why there's not too much discuss- discussion in this episode deliberately because we are paying respect to the breath and understanding yes. why it's so powerful. Yes. And Stephanie, I love that you closed us out on that note, because that really, to me, is what the breath is. And I always say that breath work isn't the only embodiment practice I teach, but it's one of my favorite. And it's definitely the most accessible. And this episode, you won't need your mind very much, because that's the whole whole point of the power of the breath is we're moving so far past, past the mind. We're moving into the heart, into the body, and so far past what's possible in the constructs of the mind and into the beingness, the aliveness, and the adventure that's calling on your heart. Thank you so much, Leslie. I really honored, pleased, thankful for having you here today. We have to do this again. And I think really cool things we we want to do and I think for the soul tribe listening that could include some more like deeper guided meditation more discussion going into yoga and other practices and modalities yes and let us know soul tribe what you want to hear what you want to see next from me and from Stephanie and by the way Stephanie I have to say I love that you say soul tribe because I don't even think you knew the name of my online community. It's Spirit Tribe. So I I literally have a paid for, I'm biased, of course, but literally the most incredible online personal development and spiritual growth growth community called Spirit Tribe. And so this whole time that you've been speaking to your soul tribe, I'm like, yeah, Spirit Tribe is right there with you. And we're just yeah. trying to get coming together. And as you say, really what I say, Steph, is this is my soul family. This exactly. is my chosen family. This is who we get to move through this crazy, crazy epic adventure with. Yeah. Absolutely. That's beautiful. So the soul and spirit tribe We're all kind of one. We're all like united as one. And for those that really enjoyed hearing um, Leslie today, please definitely check her out. She's on Instagram at the Leslie Medley and the Leslie Medley dot com. And also she can be contacted directly through email, the Leslie Medley at gmail dot com. But we'll also have um, Leslie's details On our page, when the episode is up, you'll see all of the information, content from Leslie, content from us. So you won't you won't miss it at all. And um, we'll definitely have some more cool 
um, coverage coming from Leslie and the Divine Feminines in the future. And with that being said, thank you so much, Leslie. Um, We are really honoured to have you here today and I'm wishing you lots of love and light and hope to see you again on another opportunity to align. Mm, Namaste. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.